Hello and welcome to Flippin' Through, the internet's number one Mad Magazine news review and interview channel. And today we're flipping through, ah, my chair, it's not where I want it to be. Flipping through Mad Magazine number 523, released October 2013, cover price $5.99, which is indeed cheap. But before I do that, please consider hitting like, hitting subscribe, and leaving a comment down below at some point during this video. That's the best way that you can help this channel grow. Um, 523, still stuck there. Went up, and then went back down. You know, such is life. Isn't that what they say? Anyway, it's the best way to support this channel and help it grow, and I really want to keep this channel growing. Um, if you want to support me in another way, patreon.com slash flipping through, um, you can be a patron and you can give me some amount of money. What do you get in return? You get this, six set of stickers, a cool Alfred E. Newman stencil that you can use to spray paint. Look at that. Create some havoc, wreck some havoc. Um, they're cool. And um, you know, it's just a way of saying that you uh, you appreciate this channel and you enjoy it. And uh, to be honest, do you know want to know what I do with this? I do stuff like, uh, by mad comics. That's what I do with it. <laughs> That's where the money goes. I'm, you know. Anyway, these are the people that support me on Patreon right now. Um, Ed, Misamo, David Strickler, Megan McInerney, Shane Buckley, Bobby Weigel, Cam Hayden, Rob Wilson, Rod Mead, Sperry, Andrew Goldfarb, Casey Ori, and Little Cozy Nostril. Thank you guys so much for the support. I hope I can keep on earning it with that. Boop. Let's go up top. Get this camera on. Oops, would have been cooler if it worked the first time. Golly, what a bummer. Anyway, um, this is a pretty awesome cover. Uh, we got um, President Barack Obama. Um, I don't know, is that, does he qualify as a gray spy in that getup? I mean, he's not the gray spy we, we like. Um, he's the gray spy we deserve. Um, anyway, uh, just a lovely, uh, lovely cover. Probably Mark Fredrickson. Let me check on madcoversite.com. Mark Fredrickson. He was the go-to guy. I think he did. He must have done like every single cover um, in like the modern era. Let's see. I'm looking. Oh my gosh. Yeah, he was doing. <laughs> he has a lot. He has to have. Um, yeah. He's got a ton, a ton of credits um, as a mad cover artist. Um Anyway, what else do I have to say about this? That's about it. The war on privacy. This is, I thought this was one of those special issues in where um, we don't have Alfred E. Newman. And we do. We do technically, but it's almost like, I don't know. I kind of don't count those, if I'm being honest. You can't say it doesn't have Alfred on the cover, but you can't say it has him on the cover either because it's just his, like a little stamp. So like the stencil, basically, um, you know, that's just my opinion. What do we got here? Um, oh, an ad for Axe Cop and High School USA. Man, they try a lot of, look at, they're trying to go for like this Archie thing. Look at, I mean, right, that's Archie. That's uh, Betty. That's Asian American Veronica. Here's um, mixed race Jughead. And here's a, uh, Reggie. I don't remember this at all, so it was probably shit, right? We can probably agree on that. Here we have, um, look at here, look at this quote. If you're not part of the solution, then you're part of the vast majority. Um, Tom Richmond, Tom Bunk, uh, Paul Coker Jr., no idea, no idea, no idea. Um, it's kind of hard with modern artists. I'm not going to lie. The letters and tomatoes department. It's really skippable. All right. It's super skippable in this era. Um, envelope of the month. I always really enjoyed. I wonder if there's anybody watching who, who had an envelope of the month. I feel like a lot of the people that um, watch this channel are also um, very talented artists. I mean, you guys sometimes send me art and 
it's very good. So um, there's that. The lookalike contest. Ugh, nothing more boring than that. Jeez Louise. That alone, they should have canceled Mad Magazine. <laughs> I don't want to look at your kid. My word. Um, the cover we didn't use, fun fact, Matt Lassen told me it was never even in contention, which is kind of annoying because a lot of them are actually really good covers and they should have been in contention. Um, ah. Why building a replica of the Titanic is a good idea. Is this something people are talking about? Look at Peter Bag. Oops, you can't see it because I zoomed in too far. Peter Bag, he's a great cartoonist. Uh, everybody's really curious to see if the band has the same commitment that the last one had. It won't be built by Carnival, so at least there won't be duty water everywhere. Uh, thanks to global warming, there aren't any icebergs left to hit. I wish that was the case. I hate ice. What is this? Branium boglinator, bo boglinators? Branium boglinators. A fishy problem. This will be good. Tommy works at the fish market and loves to play jokes on the customers. This time, he mixed up the signs on the fish barrels. Now, the carp barrel, the catfish barrel, and the catfish and carp barrel are all mislabeled and need to be sorted out. Tommy will let you choose only one fish, but it can, but it can be from the barrel of your choice. Will this one fish help you solve the problem? Like, listen, we know that it's not a sincere riddle, but would it? Yeah, in a way. R wait. Answer, yes. I'd choose a fish from any barrel and shove it straight up Tommy's butt. A catfish or carp in the crap hole should get the little twerp to fix his signs and discourage him from playing any more moronic jokes. Look at this, Tolka. Oh, my goodness. Uh, celebrity cause of death betting odds, Chris Brown? Uh, Counterpunch by Rihanna. Ooh. <laughs> Bleach poisoning after he tries to make the carpet match the drapes. <laughs> God. Um, new neck tattoo of Felix a cat farting into a paper bag becomes hopelessly infected. Suicide when Rihanna leaves him for OJ. Uh, killed in tragic tandem bicycle crash while enjoying delightful New England getaway with new BFF, Drake. What does that mean? Does, does Drake beat women too? Um, all right, let's see. I'm going to, I'm just going to change the page. This is the Fundalini pages of this era were super dense. This is going to be like, it's like six or eight pages sometimes. Okay. Only five. I oversold it. Um, uh, okay. Monster or male porn star. Um, that's fascinating. Uh, oh my God. Well, the Joe, all right. So it's like there, there is actually a mix. So like, um, Johnny Sausage is a mobster. Joe Bananas is a mobster. Uh, John LaRock is a mobster. Uh, seven, Billy Fingers is a mobster. Nine, John Steele is a mobster. Mickey Mouth is a mobster. Ooh, Cockeyed <laughs> is a mobster. Um, who else? Uh, Maddie the Horse. Oh, Sammy the Bull and Maddie the Horse are mobsters. And then Jimmy Dumps and Whitey Bulger. I mean, some of those are, I think most people, you know, even, you know, hayseeds like me living out in the Midwest in flyover country. Even we have heard of Sammy the Bull and Whitey Bulger. Um, Joe Bananas? That's a new one for me. Um, that's good, though. I love that. Let's see. Pool toys no one bought. Oh, oh my gosh. This was, oh, this is so funny. Um, on, the, uh, on the live stream, there was a, an article recently about a guy who, it was the first insider trading arrest and um, for cryptocurrency, for cryptocurrency. And it was written, and it was, the, the, the guy who got arrested was the dude who did this, Nathan Chastain, but he goes by Nate Chastain. And in the article on the New York Times or the New Yorker, some, some place, they said, former mad jokester, 
which is funny because he's been in Mad one time, but they, they gave him that, um, that name. This is uh, kind of fun. Um, Fisher-Price Animals, Carcass Floaty. Uh, Nerf Sur Super Soaker, Extreme... Oh, God, what has come over me? Is it new? Nerf... Christ. Nerf Super Soaker, Extreme Chlorine Blaster. McCormick, Mild Taco Water Seasoning Pack. Dry Erase Diving Board. Um, cast Iron Pool Noodle and Snorkeling Monocle. It's amusing. Um, but, oh, look at this cool Caldwell piece. Fun facts about Mars. Look at this isn't anything like what he does, right? Look at all these guys have skinny legs. But look at Marvin the Martian. Then there's the Mars Attacks guys. Uh, Martian Manhunter. I don't know these three. So if you do, please leave a comment down below. Fill me in on these aliens. Or is that just supposed to be a gray? I don't know. Swedish astronauts landed on Mars in 1998, but an embarrassed American news media hushed it up. Using sophisticated equipment, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory was able to spot nearly 100 errors and then 1,990 smash hit. <laughs> errors in the 1990 smash hit Total Recall. Total Recall was, to me, a masterpiece. There was a lady with three breasts, and when I was a child, like a middle schooler, that was pretty cool. Um, an age-old dilemma. When Charles married Elaine 12 years ago, he was three times her age. Today, he is twice as old as Elaine. Where do you suppose he went for his honeymoon? What is it? I think I remember this. This comes from an, uh, this comes from the, the Abbott and Costello TV show. This is like episode two on that. They do this joke. Um, Hopefully to jail. Based on the information given, Charles and Elaine must have been married when he was 36 and she was 12. Um, here, this is, uh, what is it? Ed, uh, what is this guy? I forget his name. Oh, Anton. Anton Emden. That's right. I like his style. I like it a lot. There's Desmond Devlin. Oh, there's Tom Richmond. Things you may not know about the jury system. That's fun. Ho-Humland, David Shane, artist, Tom Richmond. <laughs> uh, the army's in you now. Um, what is this? This is a TV show from back in the day about uh, like a paranoid schizophrenic who works for the CIA. Is that what it was? Oh, gosh. I forgot to zoom out. What a dope I am. This is the problem of not having this in front of me. I don't see. Did I show you guys this? Was this even lined up? I sure hope so. Um, what was I saying? I don't know. I lost track of what I was saying. I think my favorite part of the movie spoofs is the splash page right at the front. She's dropping the pills. Richmond's good at sticking in some good chicken fat. We've got the spies over there. This dude's roasting a marshmallow. Where is I must be missing some stuff. Usually fits in more little uh, silly billy things. I guess that was it. Um, oh, you know what I forgot? I got to zoom in on some of these marginals. Because I got... I got the firepower to do that now. Oh God, what is it? Look at this is actually cool because it's bigger than my eyes can see. Oh, shit. Oh, God, the wolf has them. I can see it better on here. It's bigger than it is now. That's how magnification works. <laughs> oh, my goodness. If you consider... Here, let's go with this. Ooh, ooh, broody. Yes, scary. Yes. This makes me so sad. Sad that you have to listen to your protege have sex. It's sad that I only wired the hotel room for audio and not video, too. Scary's a dedicated CIA agent. Oh, sweet Lord, Scary. Yeah, she takes enhanced interrogation techniques to a whole new level. I respect how willing she is to get her hands dirty. Yeah, Scary, right there. I think she's getting more than just her hands dirty. Get it? Anyway, look at this one.
I mean, I don't know. I don't really. Anyway. Oop. We got to zoom out. Tom Shaney. Often mistaken for John Caldwell. Mistaken by me. Probably not other people. Ah, so here are the rules of office cubicle etiquette. I might just zoom out. Yeah, what is that? Kind of smells like gym socks filled with rotting bacon. It's a matter of common courtesy to check on the welfare of a fellow employee who hasn't left his cubicle in order over a week. <laughs> Although prairie dogging from the top of one's cubicle is acceptable when paying notice to an attractive employee, doggy dogging is widely regarded as classless. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, the task of keeping one's workspace neat and tidy should never be accomplished by dumpstering into an absent or vacationing employee's area. When hooking up multiple pieces of electronic gear, special care must be taken to avoid connections, which could cause excessive power searches in adjacent work stations. <laughs> Uh, while it is a good idea to keep a fresh change of clothes in one's cubicle, the act of changing should never be performed in the cubicle itself. <laughs> oh, God, that's amazing. Just imagine that view. That's something to behold. Although partition vaulting is an efficient way to reduce travel time to the donut cart, plan routes that will not injure fellow employees. <laughs> oh, God. Wrong way. Oh, here's a nice ad. The fold-in collection. That'd be pretty sick to have. There's a lot of things that Mad published, like this and also the Don Martin one. Not Don. Yeah, the Don Martin one where it's like really nicely bound. It has like the, the sleeve, whatever it's called. Um, that would be really cool to own. But I don't know that... I want to be the one to buy it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would rather buy more of like the Russ Cochran collections that I just sit on my shelf and don't read than one of those. I don't know. Here we go. Look at Matt Lassen. Got to work with Tom Bunk. Friend of the show, Matt Lassen. Yawn, all that porridge made me sleepy. This bed is too hard. This one's too soft. This one's just right. <laughs> ah, bad box. Oh, my God. I love this. This looks, I mean, you know, he did work with um, the Garbage Pail Kids. But, like, this really looks like a Garbage Pail Kid, right? Oh, dude. I love it. I want to I wanna start drawing stuff like Tom Bunk does with guts and blood and barfs. Um, I don't understand those Mickey Mouse ears you get at Disneyland. They don't make you look like Mickey Mouse. They make you look like you scalped Mickey Mouse and are wearing his ears as a trophy. Planet Tad. I'm going paintballing tomorrow. I asked Kevin what I need to bring. He said, nothing much. Todd even said he'd bring lunch for us. So all you need to do is wear some clothes you don't mind getting paint on. So I went through my closet and found an old pair of jeans and a ratty old sweatshirt with Pikachu on it from when I was 10. It's a little tight, but it fits. I'm psyched and really glad Todd thought to invite us. It's funny, he always used to think he was kind of a jerk, but it turns out he's actually pretty cool. What do you think happens? I'll tell you. Tad gets fucked over. That guy was a jerk. A mad look at the theater. Look at this. Mock him. A cheer for him. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wait, I don't... <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's funny. 
here's the thing. One, these are really hard to, to read out because there are no words. But also, I think I stand by what I said a long time ago. Weeks ago, probably. I like it better black and white. I like Sergio's style better black and white. At least these. Um, I think what I had pointed out was like, I like the, um, I like the whatchamacallit. Like Gru. Gru makes sense because that's more of a comment, but... Here, here we have nine reasons. Technology sucks. Um, Jeff Cruz, writer, artist, Jeff Kirschbaum. Jeff, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Kirschbaum. A Google, number one, Google Glass, the perfect gift for the dangerously multitasking jackwad who hasn't already killed himself by texting while driving. Boy, those just like died, right? They almost happened, and then everybody decided that that would be too far. That would be going too far. All the praise for 3D printers and how they allow people to produce whatever they want without acknowledging that not everyone is going to make soap dishes or models of the USS Enterprise. Cool. You made a bazooka or something. Um, w <laughs> number three. The fuss over the computer Watson winning on Jeopardy. Now, if it had won on Survivor, then we'd be impressed. I'm watching Survivor right now. I'm watching the new season. Um, condescending gadgets designed for women, whose main difference from the ones designed for men is that they come in pastel colors. That's really true. There's something called, isn't they, they, they call it like the, the woman tax, the female tax. And it's um, how sometimes things that are marketed towards women, like deodorants or other things, are more expensive than the ones marketed towards men. Even though it's the same amount, same, basically the same product, it's just for women. The self-perpetuating need to develop advanced technology to catch the evildoers who are trying to develop technology outside the reach of the advanced technology being developed to catch them. I like how that's written. The self-replicating nanobots that threaten to overrun the world and wipe out humanity as we know it. Those things are just the pits. And number nine, doing the mad fold in on an iPad, which robs kids of the great joy of ruining an actual magazine on the newsstand. There's no, there's no replacement for that, for doing the, uh, the fold in. Except for not doing the fold in, because then it's, in, it's in, like really nice. Global warming, haiku. Isn't that funny? He designed that character, right? Um... Bass and Reeves? No. What was it called? Anyway. It snowed yesterday. Therefore, global warming's fake. The subject is closed. Don't sweat wildfires. They will soon be extinguished by the next flash flood. Floods, droughts, and killer storms. Global warming sucks, but makes Al Roker's job fun. Boy, does it. I love it when they put him somewhere dangerous. <gasps> oh. The first 23 issues of Mad are now available for download from Comixology. Um, or the Mad app in the iTunes store. I wonder if that app is still active. Um, Comixology, I, I, I know people that read on that, and they said basically it, it has become ruined. Um, okay, which ones do I own? Brrrp, brrrp, ding, dong, bing, bong. Four, four of the 23. I'm getting there, guys. I will get them all. All right? I will. I promise you. Here you have the strip club. Um, projectile vomit, baby. Oh, Jesus. Scott Nickel, you're disturbed. You know how you know Scott Nickel is disturbed? Because he worked with Kit Lively. That's how. Jump cut, World War Z. Man. This week on Deadly Survival. My partner Bob and I are going to show you how to survive if you're lost in the Mojave Desert. Step number one, plan your provisions. Hydration is crucial. You said it, Tom. Number one, always bring, bring plenty to drink. In case you can't find a fresh water source, your best bet against dehydration is drink your own urine. That's why I made sure to pee in both of our canteens before we left. Why didn't you just fill them with water from the sink? Wow, I forgot I ate so much asparagus yesterday. <laughs> Oh, look at another appearance of a friend of the show, Noah Van Skyver. 
Hi, boys and girls. My buddy Charlie Chihuahua and I found a giant marshmallow. Oh, boy, am I hungry. Burf. Wow, what a weird dream. It was so real. I could have sworn I ate something. <laughs> I bet you thought I was going to discover that I ate my pillow in my sleep, huh? Burp. Oh, no. Charlie Chihuahua. <laughs> Noel Van Skyver. He's huge, man. He just put out a new book. That guy can't stop putting out books. He's, uh, he's unstoppable. Oh, my gosh. Here's another Teresa Burns Parkhurst. She was... She was in the last issue. She killed it. Uh, the influences of Fifty Shades of Grey on modern weddings. Let's see. Bridezilla's now get frustrated when their attendants can't agree on a body harness that flatters them all. Okay, you put this on, Carol. You're taking back... <laughs> you're talking back fat for miles and the strapless simply is not appropriate for a flower girl. One lucky fella gets to catch the chastity belt. <laughs> intimate, personalized wedding vows have become disturbingly more intimate. I, Clarence, give you me, give you me, Clarence, to have and to hold, to bind, to gag, in shackles or in chains, to praise or demean all the days of my life. Uh, the most emotional event of the night is when the newlyweds do their first spank as a married couple. <laughs> oh, my God. That is disturbing. Listen, Teresa, you've done it again, you minx. <laughs> That's not appropriate. Why did I say that? Um, Chilling Thoughts 2013 edition. Artist Evan Dorkin. Dude, Evan Dorkin's cool, man. Look at these. Look at these illustrations. Colorist Sarah Dyer. Those quiet moments inside your mother's womb just before you're spotted by the sonogram are the last of your life you'll ever spend away from video surveillance. The obesity epidemic is coinciding with a rise in global warming, and that means more, way more fat guys than Speedos. The Eskimos have 70 different words for snow, which is only half as many as men have for boobs. Hey, that means also... Eskimo men have that many. Um, the extended director's cut DVD of The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey, will include all the extra scenes that Peter Jackson was unable to squeeze into his three-hour slog fest due to time constraints. Yeah, that movie was not good. There are Kardashians who aren't talented or interesting enough to be on TV. What? What other ones are there? Silliams and Winona. Oh, I like these. These are so much fun, but these are really hard to, like, flip through. The best of the idiotical. <laughs> Do you see a young lady or an old hag? Do you see a candlestick or two faces? Do you see a heroic patriot or a despicable traitor? This isn't really a joke, though. That's like a... It seems more like a political statement. And then here we have... Spy vs. Spy Museum. Hey, I did some research, which if you watch this channel a lot, you know I don't normally do. Um, you can no longer buy any of this stuff at spymuseumstore.org. I'm sorry to break it to you. Hey, guys, thank you so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. That's absurd. You should have turned it off by now. But thank you for watching. Please remember, hit subscribe, hit like, and leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching. Toodaloo.